without fear, favor, bias, affection, ill will, or prejudice. That was then. The Constitution Implementation Commission, whose mandate is among other things to promote constitutionalism, responding to the call of duty. However, seven months later and the commission is raising the red flag, they are understaffed and further haven't been paid at all, pointing an accusing finger at the man behind the head of the civil service docket, Francis Mudaura. This has, however, drawn a sharp reaction from the government through its spokesperson, Alfred Mutua. The directive by the head of public service and the secretary to cabinet stopping the processing of CIC salaries amounts to instructing ministries to violate the express provisions of the law. They can call press conferences, they can do whatever they want. The government of the day is not going to allow anybody to blackmail it. Under the current proposal, the chair of the commission should earn a total of about 1.3 million shillings per month, comprising of a salary of up to 900,000 shillings and allowances totaling 442,000 shillings. The other commissioners are to earn between 1 and 1.17 million shillings. The commissioners argue this is the pay package that was offered to them and that it was well within the law as set out in the Constitutional Officers Remuneration Act of 2009. Kenya today cannot afford to pay people millions of shillings for public service. It is an issue of saying it is not sabotage, it is saying that everybody in this country needs to recognize that we are a poor economy. But CAC may have to scale down its operations if the issue is not resolved immediately. The process of implementation of the constitution will grind to a halt. They are telling the people of Kenya, we are blackmailing you, you pay us millions of shillings per month or we are not going to do our job. CIC holds that elements in the office of the president, that is Mudaura, have no mandate according to the CIC Act to set their salaries as this is the work of Treasury and the Parliamentary Service Commission. The delay in implementing the agreed terms and conditions of service for the commissioners was occasioned by a communication from the head of public service and the secretary to the cabinet. It is his job to make sure that we have a lean government that is efficient. Now amidst the accusations and counter accusations, several questions emerge. Who is fooling who? Who is committed to the implementation of the constitution? Who is committed to reform? And who is simply peppering through the cracks? Willis Raburu, Citizen Live at 9, Nairobi.